Well, the power of the rover, as an addition to what the astronauts could use on the moon, is reflected in this very ambitious uh, traverse lineup for Apollo 15. You can see down at the bottom uh, the distance scale measuring about measuring five kilometers, which is about three miles. And uh, you can see that now with the rover, the astronauts are able to travel for literally miles across the terrain and to do that several times in the course of one three-day uh, visit to the lunar surface. Um, the landing site for Apollo 15 was designed to take advantage of this new capability. And so the geologists picked a spot in the um, what's called the Lunar Apennine mountain range, um, which forms the, um, the eastern shore of uh, Mare Imbrium, the Sea of Rains, um, which is one of the big uh, uh, lava flow fields on the moon. And the rim of that great lava sea is uh, ringed by a, a very tall range of mountains, some of which are approaching 15,000 feet in altitude above the uh, surrounding plains. Um, the attractive thing about the Hadley Apennine site was that it allowed the astronauts to land on a relatively flat um, mare surface, the lava flow field at the base of the mountains, and yet they still had access to uh, some of the mountains themselves. One in particular called Hadley Delta Mountain, which you see um, at the bottom of the landing site area in the big picture. The, uh, the inset at upper left shows uh, what the big picture shows in that white rectangle. Now you can also see that there is a tremendous attraction in the form of a giant canyon called Hadley Rill, which is about a mile wide and half a mile deep, and um, the origin of which was somewhat mysterious to geologists before Apollo 15. They had a feeling that it had something to do with flowing lava, but uh, they weren't positive about that, and they weren't sure what the mechanism would be for uh, forming such a feature. So it was of great interest, and so were the mountains. And the reason for the mountains being of such tremendous interest is that um, they had already figured out, the geologists had already figured out, that there were two main rock types on the moon, broadly speaking. The, uh, the dark areas that we see from Earth are basalt, which were molten lava that erupted from the moon's interior. But the white areas, the really bright parts of the moon that we see from Earth, are much older, um, and, or at least the geologists expected that they would be much older. Uh, and, and many of them felt that it was likely that these bright areas were in fact the oldest crust of the moon, maybe dating back to the moon's very formation something around four and a half billion years ago. The idea being that when the moon formed, it was so hot that the outer regions of the moon were completely molten, a kind of an ocean of liquid rock or magma, as the geologists called it, and that this later cooled into a kind of primordial crust. Well, one of the goals for the Apollo 15 astronauts in driving up the side of this uh, mountain called Hadley Delta was to see if they could find pieces of that ancient crust. So uh, one goal among many goals for this very ambitious mission. Well, here you see uh, Dave Scott on the slope of Hadley Delta. Uh, this was on the second moonwalk of Apollo 15. And, um, you know, one of the things that Dave told me was that it was very difficult to walk up that mountain because of the very thick dust layer that covered it. Uh, of course, on the moon, there's a, there's a dust layer all over the moon from, that's created from uh, micrometeorites raining down on the moon. Of course, there's no atmosphere to screen those out the way we have here on Earth. We see them as shooting stars, but on the moon they hit the surface. These little sand-sized particles that are streaming in from space at many miles per second. 
Well, they grind the rock, rock up into powder. And on the slopes of these mountains, to their surprise, they found that the dust was even thicker than they experienced down on the, the flatter regions. So it was kind of like walking up a sand dune. And then also you have the stiffness of the pressurized suit. And um, it just made a very difficult place to work. Uh, in fact, they had no uh, clue as to how steep the slope really was until they got off the rover. The rover climbed the slope pretty much effortlessly. But when Scott and Irwin got off the rover, they almost fell over because uh, there was such a steep slope. However, their, uh, their prospecting on uh, the slope of Hadley Delta did pay off. They did find uh, pieces of the moon's primordial crust, one of which in particular became known as the Genesis Rock. And so uh, that was one of the most exciting moments of the entire mission. Now, this is a picture that emphasizes some of the risks in going up on such a steep slope. Uh, what this is, is Dave has uh, stopped the rover to examine a large boulder. Uh, there really weren't many big boulders on, on the side of the mountain. So when he saw this one, he was very interested. Got off the rover, um, put his tongs on the boulder to serve as a reference, and then took a few pictures and took a sample off the top. Now, what I want to call your attention to is in the background, Jim Irwin is holding on to the rover because you can see the rover's back wheel is completely off the ground in this steep slope in this uneven terrain. And the rover had started to slide downhill. This is not a good thing when you're up on the side of a mountain uh, about three miles away from the lunar module. And if the rover got away from you, you'd have to walk home. So uh, Irwin is holding onto the rover. And you can imagine the stress that this caused in mission control as they heard the astronauts uh, talking about this, but everything worked out. Now, here is the view looking down the slope of Hadley Delta towards Hadley Rill, which is a few miles away here. This actually was taken during the first uh, moonwalk of Apollo 15, but you can see it's really a grand uh, a scene of, of tremendous grandeur and beauty, almost like an Ad Ansel Adams photograph of the American West. And Hadley Rill is just a spectacular feature. Um, you can see little, what look like little dots on the floor of the canyon. Those are actually boulders the size of houses. So this picture, which has really become one of the best known pictures from Apollo, really conveys the majesty of that feature. Well, on the third moonwalk, Scott and Irwin actually drove up to the rim of Hadley Rill, several places. They got out, they took pictures of the far wall where they could actually see layers of different lava flows. And on the near side where they were, they were able to actually sample boulders. You see these big boulders. These are the remnants of lava flows that erupted over the moon uh, roughly three and a half billion years ago. And of course, these boulders, each flow of lava is like a page from a great geologic history book. And it was one of the things that made Apollo 15 one of the most spectacular missions. In fact, it was uh, called by one of the geologists involved uh, one of the greatest triumphs in space science.